Welcome, you're watching Mission 2024. I'm Nabila Jamal. Our big exclusive interview with MK Stalin, Tamil Nadu Chief Minister, the first in three years. Only on India Today, taking you through that. Let me first start with the headlines. Congress releases 2024 manifesto, reiterates the vow to hold a nationwide caste census. Rahul Gandhi says this election is to save democracy. BJP says the Congress is peddling lies. And BJP taunts the Congress over manifesto blooper, Thailand picture used for environment, New York photo for waste management in the Congress manifesto. BJP mocking says the Congress gearing up for Rahul's holiday. Ejival's portrait war continues. Bhagat Singh's kin slams the Amadmi party for preparing the Delhi chief minister to a freedom fighter. In fact, poll panel sends out a notice to Atishi over her operation on Lotus Dutch. Laker Gate Heat mounts on jailed BRS leader K. Kavita. Court grants CBI permission to grill KCR's daughter. CBI claims Kavita, a key conspirator in the Delhi Liquor Gift. Congress, in fact, in Karnataka, Bengaluru's uh, Rameshwaram Cafe Blast case as the probe intensifies. Congress now claiming the NIA has detained and interrogated a BJP worker, Sai Prasad, in the blast probe, says BJP worker linked to two other suspects. Kerala story proposed DD screening kicks up a storm. Left and the Congress demands a stop of the screening, says the film will lead to rise in communal tensions ahead of polls. Explosive UK media report. The Guardian reports claims that India is behind the killings of nearly 20, host in, in fact, people who are hostile to India, all on Pakistan's soil since 2020. Pakistan claims India's raw agents behind those assassinations. Tamil Nadu goes to polls in the first phase of this Lok Sabha elections, April 19th. The DMK big boss, MK Stalin, for the first time in an exclusive conversation with India today. How battle ready are they? Let's have a listen. Rajdeep Sardesai bringing us this talk. get a very rare interview with M.K. Stalin, the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu and the leader of uh, the DMK, uh, because he's traveling across uh, the state. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Stalin. Welcome. Uh, how confident are you of last time the DMK Congress Alliance won all 40 seats, including Puducherry? Uh, you only lost one, 39 out of 40. How confident are you this time? This time also... 40 to 40, definitely. You are you're confident of 40 to 40? No, definitely, definitely. What is the main issue in this election, Mr. Chief Minister? I am going to ask you to ask me to ask you to ask me 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 to ask you are not worried about BJP's rise, Modi factor in there is no Modi factor in Tamil Nadu. Modi and the Tamil Nadu press But who is your main opponent then? AI DMK versus DMK, not BJP? ADMK is the main. Opposition. BJP is a drama. The second year is the Anglo-Kula Portion. They are attacking you, the others are attacking you on dynasty and corruption. These two issues. Yeah. They are saying family Raj and DMK on corruption. Uh. How do you respond? The Makal Githiri and the CAG report and the Kutsun the Thiri. If on the election bond, other than a very good election, the Yarala Merkit Maitan the Thiri. You are with India Alliance. Yeah. Are you confident India Alliance can come to power 
in uh, the center definitely ஒரு <laughs> role in national politics your late father karmanidhi ji used to play a big role in delhi yeah do you want to play a role in delhi or you are happy here in chennai <laughs> both. Huh? both both you want to play a role yeah, in delhi yeah. and chennai yeah both bringing people together yeah okay we'll wait and see thank you thank so much you, thank you All right there you have it Tamil Nadu chief minister MK Stalin in that exclusive conversation with India today's Rajdeep Sardesai a first response to the Dinesh charge MK Stalin takes on prime minister Modi says we are very sure that we will be able to defeat the Modi juggernaut this 2024 Lok Sabha he says no Modi factor in Tamil Nadu specifically speaking of Tamil Nadu the state enters polls on the 19th of April in the first phase itself Tamil Nadu to go to election at once He says there is no Modi factor. The more Modi comes to Tamil Nadu, the more it favors and benefits the DMK. Big claims by MK Stalin saying that the Modi effect is not prevalent in Tamil Nadu for sure. That Modi comes to Tamil Nadu and only peddles lies. It's only benefiting us. And Stalin here making it quite clear this time that our main opponent is the AIA DMK. Remember the AIA DMK was once an ally of the BJP in 2019 it was uh, the AIA DMK and the BJP that formed a, an alliance uh, to come together as an NDA that they fought the DMK swept the elections in 2019. DMK is looking to come back with the same effect that we quickly got across to Rajdeep Sardesai who's joining us live right after that interview. Rajdeep You really pulled off what many can MK Stalin speaking for the first time in 3 years in fact he hardly speaks at all but he has we heard that he wasn't in the best of his health but he seems to have recuperated right ahead of Lok Sabha elections so he's battle ready tell us what he's told you In fact Nabila uh, MK Stalin hasn't I've now checked spoken since the last since he was uh, chief made chief minister yeah. again in 2021 this is his first interview since he became chief minister of tamil nadu albert very short because he said he was very short of time uh, we wanted to ask him on a variety of other issues including the udayanidhi question and of course the question of dynastic succession and the sanatan dharma question but he uh, said he had to leave at that time but i think what's very clear is that uh, mk stalin genuinely believes that his main opponent is the ai dmk now whether that uh, whether he is strategically playing down the belief that the bjp is a rising force in uh, tamil nadu or it suits his politics to make this a regional battle is anybody's uh, guess but yeah. my own sense yeah. is uh, mk stalin uh, wants to make this election if he can uh, an election where he is standing up he says for tamil nadu versus delhi he claims this is not an election to decide who is the prime minister of india you saw his response when i asked him who will be the prime minister of the india alliance he said that will be decided after the election he wants to make it very much about regional issues then whether it be flood relief and the lack of disbursement he claims of funds to tamil nadu whether it be the neat issue he wants to localize the election as much as possible and make it about dmk versus ai dmk and not dmk versus bjp and that i think is interesting because there's been a lot of media hype about how the bjp could become a factor in tamil nadu this time uh, they didn't win a single seat last time and just 3.7% of the vote but with annamalai playing a, a a more frontal role as their party president the prime minister visiting tamil nadu more than half a dozen times just in the last few months there's a visible sense that the bjp wants to increase its presence and the chief minister i think wants to downplay the bjp factor and focus instead on his primary regional rival the ai right. dmk which i thought is an interesting strategy you know the ai dmk is currently in tatters at least after splitting from the bjp and they did so itself uh, thinking that the bjp wasn't really helping the ai dmk in fact it was uh, rather pulled down with associating uh, by associating with the bjp but 
On the contrary, the BJP has sort of leveled up. In that sense, the BJP is trying to be the fitting opposition. Uh, in fact, the principal opposition for Tamil Nadu against the DMK, they feel it their top guns, be it Anamalai at the helm there, who's doing a fabulous job in sort of building that surround sound for BJP in the state. Uh, along with that, Governor Tamilasai very recently resigned as the governor of Tenagana. She's now being fielded in, in Tamil Nadu. So BJP pulling all stops to ensure they pick their numbers. What are their chances, I think, Rajdeep? I, I, I think, Nabila, you have to look at the BJP looking at this election from three, two through three perspectives. Number one, it's not so much about seats, but about increasing vote share. I think the BJP, which won 3.7% of the vote share only last time, wants to go into double digits and beyond. Uh, their own uh, uh, pollsters claim that they will cross 20%. That seems very difficult, but they certainly appear poised to possibly enter double digits this time in terms of vote share. Number two, I think they want to just increase their visibility and that of the Prime Minister in Tamil Nadu to send out the message that there is no north-south divide as the opposition says, that the Prime Minister is as keen of investing his political capital in a state like Tamil Nadu, where the BJP may not get many seats, as he is in uh, in North and Western India. And number three, I think somewhere, the BJP strategy is, is that can we occupy the opposition space at least this time? If the AIDMK, as you rightly said, is a party which has struggled after the death of Jai Lalita, so let's not underestimate Edapadi Palani Sami. He's a leader who has a future even now and he's holding the AIDMK together. The BJP is competing for that opposition space in the hope that if it can increase its uh, visibility within the opposition space, then in the future, maybe next time or uh, 10 years from now, mm -hmm. it can actually become a potent seat-winning uh, uh, party in uh, Tamil Nadu. So the BJP is playing a step-by-step -step incremental approach, knowing that it's not going to be easy to overnight dismantle these well-organized uh, parties, absolutely. both the DMK and the AIDMK. You know, Rajdi, but very interestingly, BJP in 2019 won only one Lok Sabha seat and that was Kanya Kumari's uh, Pondradha Krishnan. Uh, this time it seems uh, like it's tough. Age is not on his side either. Uh, but, but they have still made sure that there are some celebrity faces who are fronting the battle for the BJP on ground. Uh, but stay with us, Rajdeep. A quick word, let me get from AIA DMK. Uh, are they happy with the statement coming in from the DMK chief, MK Stalin? Kovai Satyan of the AIA DMK joining us on the phone line. Kovai, uh, a quick word from you. Stalin says, our direct competition here in Tamil Nadu is the AIA DMK. BJP is nowhere in the picture. I congratulate MK Stalin who has awakened from his deep slumber. As a national party, BJP has taken up majority of the media space and there is a noise in media. This noise doesn't translate on the ground, nor it is going to translate into votes. This is what we've been saying for the last three years. Wherein, driven by the narrative of BJP, even DMK has fallen into their trap. Now I'm happy and I congratulate M.K. Stalin, who had realized what the reality is. And Tamil Nadu is a swing door state. Five years, it's AIADMK. Next five is DMK. That's how it has been. Both the Dravidian parties are the ones who are calling these shots for the last 55 years. So there is no role for any national party in Tamil Nadu. Even in this election, there is no space or a role for any national party in Tamil Nadu, including BJP. What BJP is struggling is to ensure, to understand what is their vote bank is all about. It could be from 2.6% to 3.6% or 5% or 6%. That's it. Not going to be more than that. And they will be happy about it since they have increased their share of votes. They are not contesting this election to win any seats. They are contesting this election to ensure that they have got an identity in terms of votes. That's what the ground reality is. The battle is between DMK and AADMK. And AADMK is all set to rewrite history. 2014, it was AADMK. We swept the entire MPs. 2019, yeah. it was DMK. Now, 2024, we are all set to rewrite history. All right. You know, Kovai, uh, stay with us. I'm going to quickly cut across to Narayan Tirupati of the BJP joining us on the phone line. Uh, Mr. Tirupati, a quick word from you. This, uh, the exclusive comment that's come in from MK Stalin. The visuals are on our screen. He's spoken to Rajdeep Sardesai. You know, first after... Uh, the assembly elections when he took on the mantle as a chief minister.
All right. Unfortunately, we've lost Nara and Tirupati on the phone line. I'm going to cut across, though, to a lot more news coming in from the election political arena. Battle for 2024 now heating up. Congress has released its manifesto today for 2024 Lok Sabha with major focus on unemployment, Nari Shakti, and youth. Congress has vowed if it's voted to power, it will conduct a nationwide caste census to identify the caste, subcaste, and ensure benefits to those marginalized. Meanwhile, the BJP has breathed fire on the Congress over their 2024 poll manifesto, saying the Congress never fulfilled state promises. They can't fulfill this promise either. Five pillars are the guarantee. The Congress has released its manifesto for the Lok Sabha elections with a focus on nyai or justice. The document makes a series of promises for the women and the youth. Bharat Jodo Nyai Atra me panch pillars par dhyan kendrit kiya gaya tha. Yatra ke dauran yuva nyai, kisan nyai, nari nyai, shramik nyai aur hissedari nyai की घोषणा की गई थी जहां कहीं भी हम गए इन न्याय की बात हमने करी थी और इसकी गारंटी भी हमने दी है वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट टॉकिंग पॉइंट्स इन द मैनिफेस्टो इज द कास्ट कंसेंसस अ पॉलिटिकल हॉट टॉपिक दैट हैज बीन इन द हेडलाइंस फॉर क्वाइट अ फ्यू मंथ्स नाउ in its manifesto, the Congress vowed to conduct a nationwide consensus to identify and enumerate castes. It has promised to waive off student loans, including unpaid interest, if it's voted to power. Congress promised guaranteed jobs to youth with 1 lakh rupees per annum salary and vowed that one woman in every family will get 1 lakh rupees per year. There will be a probe into the controversial electoral bonds that was scrapped by the Supreme Court recently. The party which has been hit by the desertions will make a law that will automatically disqualify MPs and MLAs who defect. At the event to release the manifesto, Rahul Gandhi declared that this election is to save democracy. This election is about those who are trying to destroy the constitution and destroy democracy in this country versus those who are trying to protect the constitution. I don't think democracy has been as much at risk. The constitution has been as much at, as, at risk as it is today. One omission from the manifesto that raised eyebrows is the silence on bringing back the old pension scheme. In that today post questions to Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi, which were eventually deflected to Congress MP and former finance minister P. Chidambaram. मेरा सवाल मैडम सोनिया गांधी से है मैम अगर आपसे सवाल राहुल जी आपने ओपीएस को लेके लगातार जो है झंडा बुलंद किया है तमाम सरकारें आपकी उन्होंने ओपीएस का वादा किया था चिदम्बरम साहब यू हैड प्रॉमिस ओपीएस एंड इन हिमाचल एंड राजस्थान यू इंप्लीमेंटेड ओपीएस बट इन द मैनिफेस्टो द ओपीएस स्कीम इज मिसिंग सो इज देर uh, uh, reflects, uh, is there a introspection that it's not viable economically? Is it that? It's not missing as such. It's very much on our minds. But please remember the developments that have taken place in the last four months. The government has appointed a committee headed by the finance secretary to review the NPS and the demand for OPS and to find a way in which the objectives of OPS can be financed by a funded pension scheme. The BJP rained fire on the Congress, accusing the party of not fulfilling promises during its tenure. In the world, the negative growth rate is the Congress has been in the Congress. That's why I said that. जिनको चार पीढ़ी तक मौका मिला है जिनको इतने लंबे समय तक मौका मिला है उन सारे लोगों का अब यह दावा है कि साहब अब हम कमाल कर देंगे द कांग्रेस मैनिफेस्टो इज हाई ऑन डायरेक्ट कैश ट्रांसफर वेलफेयर स्कीम्स बट विल इट बी इनफ टू स्वे वोटर्स 
its promise to implement universal basic income during the 2019 elections had no impact on the voters then. With Mausami Singh in New Delhi, Bureau Report, India Today.